With DirectX 11 coming out soon and getting a lot of the attention along with the new virtual reality support, I wanted to take a moment to look into what is perhaps the third biggest update slated to be in our hands soon. Something that will affect everyone that is involved with R Factor 2, making it one of the most important, and that is the user interface updates. Let's take a look at everything we've seen so far and overanalyze it completely. If it's your first time seeing this picture, you probably had the same reaction I think all of us did when we first saw it, and that was wow. Wow because you like it, or wow because you're surprised by it. In my case it was both, and it's a great case study for how you can completely transform an interface without adding or removing any core features. Let's break it down. The first section is the overall navigation. You can see we are in the quick race car selection screen, and there is a back button to go back to the general race menu. Now I think using an angle bracket here looks a little cheesy, as I pointed out with my angle bracket overlay, but I think it would look a lot better in this case if the back button had an arrow or a curved arrow instead. They are already using flat icons in the design, as you can see by the top right, so a curved arrow wouldn't look out of place. The top bar I'm going to talk about a little bit more on the next screen, so we'll look down here to the vehicle selection, currently unfiltered and showing everything the user is subscribed to, with the option to filter it down probably by class or by mod. A preview picture is displayed in the middle, unclear whether it is a static photo or a 3D model that you could rotate with your mouse, it's probably just a picture with some information about the car to the right. The select button being how you can pick this as the car you want to use in the quick race, and the modify button being where you could adjust any of the upgrades. For instance, a lot of formula car mods have various downforce packages. Orange arrow buttons on either side of the screen move you from one car to the next and correspond to the list of cars at the bottom, which gives you a preview of what is coming next based on your current selection filter. I'm assuming you can click on a car further down the line to jump to that car immediately, and at the bottom you have an A to Z listing to jump to that particular letter in your list of cars. Next we saw this, which looked like an initial mock-up, but it does give some good vibes. First off, the diagonal lines in the sections and buttons across the bottom are a nice touch. User interfaces are usually extremely blocky, so adding diagonal lines makes them a lot more interesting to look at. At the top, I'm assuming this home screen section is the R Factor 2 link with the race, watch, and community of course being quick links to those sections. The driver name is displayed in the top right along with a place for you to edit your settings. Now what settings are behind the helmet? I'm not sure, but maybe a different way to get the things like replays. The gear being for the general settings menu we all know and love for things like graphics and controls, and what's interesting here is the addition of the chat icon. I'm not sure if this is just placeholder concept art or what, because these three icons are on all four screens we're going to look at today, and it makes sense for the screens that are in an event and how you would get to the chat box in the race, but in the menu I'm not sure. The sections below give good insight into the initial landing page of R Factor 2. There will be a News tab. Now if News is still being displayed in the launcher window, that seems a little redundant, but we'll see. The Race menu, where you can move into single or multiplayer, and may I point out that the fact that you have this choice there, combined with the News tab, makes me feel like the launcher window might be going away. And then Watch, which will probably showcase some official videos and hopefully some community videos as well. I personally am hoping that maybe one day one of my VEC highlight videos shows up in a screen like this, because that and the community tab could be excellent avenues for Studio 397 to highlight some of the community content and leaks. And the player tab is sort of like the helmet dilemma, I'm not really sure about that one. Next up is the race standing screen, and this is a really nice looking screen. We are initially greeted by a hamburger menu and a back arrow. And may I just point out, they totally have arrows in their icon repository. Moving on. Anyway, the burger menu, I would assume, leads to some of the in-game options like switching cars or calling votes, with the arrow being a way to exit the race. Again, these are assumptions. Track and server information are shown at the top here, which is nice, doesn't clutter the screen, but is there when you need it. The chat icon makes a lot more sense here, as I mentioned earlier, as a way to get to the in-game chat. Now I'm going to completely go on some hunches here for this next bit. But I think this main section of the screen is split into two main parts, each with three options. And each of the two sections can be controlled independently of each other. Right now, event info and sectors are selected, but I think you would be able to select camera and standings, and these sections of the same screen would just change accordingly, giving you the ability to select what information you want and how you want it. Right now, we are on the spectate tab along the bottom, focusing on the session standings and the spectator options like before. We'll talk about the setup screen in the next slide, and drive being how you get back onto the track, replacing the giant race button. 
Event info, we can see what it shows. The addition of a live track map is pretty awesome and can help find a quiet spot on track during qualifying. Camera and live stream, not sure what the difference would be because I would assume you still have the option to select a car and change the camera, etc. Maybe live stream is an auto director or something? Graph, I'm hoping, is a positional multi-line graph or something that shows how the positions have been changing during the race. Sectors we see, and you can immediately see as well that there is way more information here than before, and the colors look great. DNF icon, currently in the pits, overall position color-coded by class, class position, oh yes, class position, tire compound, live gaps with what looks like relative coloring based on the current pace and number of pit stops. Standings is probably a slightly simpler version of this screen that shows more cars at the same time. And the setup screen. This may motivate me to spend more time on my setups. So this is the latest screenshot we have and the exit arrow seems to still be there but the burger menu is gone and replaced by this icon. As to its meaning and use, I am not sure. But we are not here to talk about burgers, let's talk about setups. It looks like every single section of the setup menus have been broken out into their own screens. We have gear selected and get little helper text into what we're doing here. Always good for new drivers and reminders for old ones. The settings are as you would expect but I think I think we have a slight interface update to show the changes made since the last time we saved the setup. As you can see to the right of some options there are blue numbers indicating a different value, and the graph on the right has slight differences between the blue line and the shaded area for the 4th and 5th gear, showcasing these changes. If that is indeed what the blue notations mean, I'm really excited for that feature and people who live in their setup menus probably are as well. Similar to the car selection screen, left and right arrows on the edges of the screen change what component you're on with a row of sections at the bottom so you can jump to a particular option quicker, with a scroll bar to move along the row faster. Showing a slight preview of the next screen is also a nice touch. Overall, hats off because this new interface looks awesome. Unfortunately, we won't be getting it at the same time as the DirectX 11 update, but hopefully it soon follows. Thanks for joining me in this over analysis and be sure to subscribe for more R-Factor 2 and sim racing content. We'll see you next time.